so I moved in with my aunt. And uh, day one moving in, I made sure to get a job as soon as possible. So I always try to get jobs that are close to where I'm living. I feel like that's way more efficient. So it's funny, these the two places I applied to first that I wanted the most, uh, I ended up getting. But uh, I applied to a lot of places. And it's funny, none of the other places uh, even wanted to hire me or even ask for anything. I applied to a bunch of places too. But the first place was this Thai restaurant. Um, so, again, a small business. It was a uh, husband and wife. The husband was American, and uh, the wife was was real Thai. I don't know what their flag looks like. I guess I should look that up. Um, it was an interesting duo, for sure, and they had two kids, too. Uh, the only employees were a bunch of young Thai kids that worked in the kitchen every so often, not very often, but mostly it was the two of them pretty much doing everything in this whole restaurant. He was kind of an imbecile, like just a dunce. Not saying anything about anything, but I really thought he would like he looked like he had Down syndrome or something, but he didn't. He just, I don't know if he appeared that way, and he seemed to be like weirdly, uh, like socially weird in some way. I don't know, like he didn't, almost like autistic, I guess you could say. Like he didn't understand people's emotions or something um he would he so he's the owner and he always talked about how he owned the business and he's a he's an mba blah 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 uh he would talk to customers just for extended periods of time just talking about himself talking about shit they didn't care about talking about the cubs all the time didn't matter what that person said or who they were They'd be at the table waiting for the food, and he's just fucking talking endlessly. Like, how does he not understand? Um, I would just have to, like, painfully watch. And there wasn't want much for me to do. They wanted me to help with the bar, because I said I had some experience. They wanted to get up and running. But he wouldn't listen to what I had to say. I'm like, you shouldn't have all these cheap beers. You know, you need, you need some craft beers. You know, that's hip right now. And... He was like, no, we're going to keep with Miller Lite and shit like that. And, like, they wanted me, they like, they kept saying how they wanted me to run the bar, but yet he didn't want me to do anything. Like, he didn't agree with anything I said, so, I don't know. And the whole thing with, with the money, again, these money deals, what's with this, like, always going down and down and down. Um, <laughs> it's kind of fun. I, I don't. I never realized it, like that. Such the trend, except telling these stories. It's like, whoa! Like, how come it always happens? Um, basically, you know how waiters get a certain rate. Usually, it's like, you know, below minimum wage, and you get tips. Blah blah blah. Well, he told me he's gonna guarantee me a rate, and so. If I don't make enough tips, they'll pay me up to that. And, uh, uh, actually, <clears throat> let me backtrack a little bit. That was going to be, my base rate was going to be a decent 10 and then tips on top of that. So that was like, okay, that sounds pretty sweet. But then he changed it to where the, he'd match me to 10 with tips. Um, uh, and then... Um, I think we would. What's weird is he was the owner, but he would also help serve a little bit, but not very well. Like he wasn't very helpful in the dining room, but we would split half the tips no matter what happened. So I'd be actually helping people, and he would pretend to actually help in the kitchen, but he'd be taking half the tips. And he's the owner. Why should he be even getting tips? It doesn't even make fucking sense. And then they changed. Yeah, he he said. Oh yeah, this is what I was gonna say. Originally, I would get. We wouldn't split half the tips until I was paid up to my $10 rate, and then I would get half the leftover tips. But then they changed it again, and then he changed it to just half the tips before even paying me up to $10. So he basically just kept changing the terms worse for me. I was just like, what the fuck? Like, I really liked the, 
the girl owner, because she was fucking fantastic at cooking. Like, she could actually cook amazing Thai food. Like, the quality of this food was excellent. But you had this imbecile running the front of the house. Is just like... Just, uh, like, what the hell? Um, I started working at... I quit that place and worked at uh, this liquor store. I was a cashier. And, uh, you know, cashier jobs. That same problem. You gotta talk to make it not awkward. Um, this is a really big liquor store, like a warehouse style. Um, I, I enjoyed it for a time, and I worked a lot of slow shifts, so I would draw a lot. Um, they say like stock stuff, but they wouldn't let me even like stock things. It was like an insider club who could actually go and stock things, and they they basically just not talk about it, and and. I just like drawing. That's all I wanted to do was just draw at the register. Like I was totally content with doing that. Um, one day they told me, "Oh, we have a new policy now. You're not allowed to draw at the register." Like, like what the fuck? Like how specific is that? Like people can read, people can do all sorts of shit. Sometimes we're literally just waiting here for like an hour, two hours, three hours, doing nothing. I can try to stock, but you don't even let me fucking stock. And now you're saying I can't draw. Like, that's obviously a haze towards me specifically. Fuck that shit. Fuck that shit. So I literally quit on the spot because I couldn't draw. And I love saying that because it, sound, it sounds ridiculous. But in my, in my terms, it made sense. Um... So this is all on a small succession, all these jobs. These are all in Illinois, and this is my most rapid job uh, change, changing up. <laughs> uh, after that job, I uh, <clears throat> over to this place that was an arcade, bowling alley kind of place. Uh, it's an arcade machine. <laughs> and I was like a janitor type of person. I quite enjoyed it. It was like a late shift too. It was, it was actually from 9 to 2 in the morning most of the time. And I'm a night owl, so that works out for me pretty well. And uh, I had to like mop stuff, clean the bathroom. I mean, basically, my main priority was just every hour you're supposed to check the bathrooms and make sure they're clean. And that's your jurisdiction. And everything else is you kind of clean on top of that clean what you feel like cleaning. But basically, that's the only thing you really have to do. So I liked that kind of low keyness about it. Um, I was actually, I started out being very detailed and I spent all this time cleaning all these glass and mirrors and every, like I would clean gum off the floor, just, you know, just of my own choice. I didn't have to do that. Um, but as people, as the rules kind of got stricter and just kind of bullshit, uh, I got a great example of management and how managers affect things. Managers, you know, they obviously should, you know, shouldn't do all a lot of work, do too much work, but you, they're kind of this like role model, you know, you have for how how you should work. So I'd be like productive and be hustling and stuff, and the manager's like, he's like, yeah, I'm gonna be sitting in the back for my break, probably for an extra like 30 minutes than usual. So I'm gonna be watching TV or watching something. So yeah. He just kind of like tells you that, and I'm just like, what the fuck? I'm here like, busting my ass, and like he does just doesn't he just doesn't give a shit. He just doesn't care. So like, well, I'm not gonna care either. I'm just gonna sit in the janitor room and play video games on my phone. So that's kind of like the trend of how that happened, and they were kind of stupidly strict with phone stuff, and basically. Like, the managers were always on their phones and abusing that, but it was technically it was a corporation. And uh, it was actually a Japanese corporation, which I thought I would enjoy, but they were kind of anal about stupid stuff and not, and not practical or productive on areas they should be. It's basically just like the opposite of what things should, you know, how things should be run. So they got on me about my being on my phone. They're like, We've seen you, people have seen you, you've been on your phone. And this guy, this manager that was telling me this was always on his phone. And just like, 
how can you tell me that when you're doing it all the time? Like, you literally can't. That's the most hypocritical shit I've ever heard. It's not like you're allowed to be on your phone. You're an employee, too. So, as it was, another another quit. Actually, what I did, I'll try to recreate what I did. I wrote, I resign. And then I did a dash, and I drew, drew a cat. Ha <laughs> ha.